If your gut health is a mess and you feel like you've tried everything, you've tried the diets and the probiotics and the supplements and the cleanses, and still you're dealing with pain, gas, bloating, discomfort, constipation, or diarrhea, I'm making this video to explain why cortisol is the single factor that you and your doctor may not have considered and why cortisol is such an important component of your gut health. And by the end of this video, you are going to understand four distinct parts of our physiology that are influenced by cortisol. Because when you understand how cortisol is influencing your gut health, then you can begin to take the steps to fix your cortisol to get well and drive whole body health by improving the health of your gut. My name is Scott Resnick. I'm a medical doctor who's been practicing functional medicine for the last 15 years, and I'm making these videos to give you guys the tools that you need to understand your health, to make good health-based decisions, and to turn around all aspects of your health and wellness without using conventional drugs. And today we're talking about cortisol and gut health. But to move into this lecture, what I want to do is just take a moment to review some basic cortisol physiology. Because when you understand what cortisol is intended to do in the body, then you can understand what's happening when we make too much of it. As you guys know, cortisol is our primary stress hormone. But to the human body, a stressor like an attack by a saber-toothed tiger is infrequent. Our body is consistently needing to maintain a couple more important components of our physiology. And these are things like our blood pressure, our pulse, and our blood glucose. Cortisol's job is to maintain blood sugar in our bloodstream to keep our heart and our brain alive. And it does this by basically scavenging to find these nutrients that we need wherever possible. So if we're in a state of starvation, cortisol melts down our bones to provide magnesium and calcium and potassium. If we're in a state of starvation, cortisol melts down our muscles to increase amino acids for the production of other more important proteins or the, or the production of neurotransmitters. And our cortisol levels break down our fat supply as well. So cortisol's primary job is to keep our body alive. And there are four places where it influences our gut's health. Number one is in our digestive abilities. Cortisol decreases or increases the amount of stomach acid produced. Either way, the amount of stomach acid is not normal. We can have too much or too little under prolonged cortisol exposure. The other thing that happens is cortisol influences the way that our gallbladder works. And when our gallbladder isn't working as well, we don't absorb our fats as well, and we don't absorb the fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K. And the last thing that cortisol does in terms of our nutritional status is it influences the way that our pancreas works. So under high cortisol states, we don't make the digestive enzymes that we are supposed to. And what this does is it means that we don't digest our foods as well. And that there are two ramifications of this. The first is that we don't gain the nutritious value of the foods that we've consumed, but it also means that we are passing poorly digested foods farther into our gastric tract. And I'll cover that in just a minute. The next thing that cortisol does is it weakens the single cell layer known as the gastric mucosa. Now what happens is our entire gastric lining is separated from the entire outside world by a single cell layer. And these are a number of cells that are basically held together shoulder to shoulder by what are known as gap or tight junctions. What this does is it mandates that anything that's taken into our body is done so across the cells and not between them. But what happens is as our cortisol goes up, as we begin to deliver less blood to our gastric lining, we begin to develop more leaky gut. And these gap junctions break down. And then what happens is we do two things. We begin to expose all these microbes that are present in the environment to the underlying immune system behind this single cell layer mucosal lining. The other thing that happens is we begin to deliver more poorly digested proteins to this underlying immunological cell group. Because remember, if our cortisol is high, we're not making the digestive enzymes that we need. And instead of breaking down our proteins into just little collections of two, three, four, or five amino acids, we're delivering more complex protein chains down into our gastric tract. And these can be erroneously misinterpreted by our immune system as something which could be a injurious microbe or a dangerous stranger. 
The third thing that cortisol does is it directly alters our microbiome. And it does this through two primary paths. The first is, as I've alluded to earlier in this video, is it changes the amount of gastric acid that's secreted. Gastric acid is kind of like a moat of acid that protects us from all the different uh, parasites and yeast and virus and bacteria that are present in the environment that would love to feast on us. We are a walking, talking petri dish of nutrients. But the other thing that happens is when we get into a high cortisol state, it's important to remember that the steroid hormone that is just to the side of cortisol is a steroid hormone known as cortisone. And cortisone directly suppresses the, away, the way that our immune system works. This is the same cortisone that's present in the hydrocortisone cream that you might put on an infected cut. So there's a double whammy because with high cortisol, not only are we making more cortisone, but we're also allowing for more poorly digested proteins, more microbes to come into our gastric tract and potentially uh, engage with our underlying immune system across a disrupted single cell mucosal lining that's been disrupted. And the last thing that high cortisol levels do is to influence the way that our vagus nerve works. Now, the vagus nerve is a cranial nerve, meaning it's originates in the brain. But unlike the other 11 cranial nerves that only go to our face and neck, the vagus nerve is interesting because as our primary rest and digest nerve, it influences everything along our gastrointestinal tract. It influences our gastric acid secretion, our gallbladder function, our pancreatic secretion of enzymes. It influences the peristalsis, the way that our gut squeezes and propels food along its length. And the other thing that the vagus nerve does, which is so interesting, is that it serves as a condu conduit between the gut and the brain. There's so much information showing that the neurotransmitters that are made in the brain are, are transmitted to the gut through the vagus nerve, and neurotransmitters that are made in the gut are transmitted to the brain through the vagus nerve. So there we have four critical points of our physiology that are affected by a high cortisol state. So how do you know where your cortisol is? So many people have gone to their doctors and bless their hearts, at least your doctors are thinking about measuring cortisol. But if all you've had is a single serum cortisol blood test done at eight o'clock in the morning, that is not giving you enough information to know how cortisol could be influencing your health. Now, I've made a video recently where I discuss how to interpret a four-part salivary cortisol test, and you can click on that video on the end screen at the end of this video. And if you want to know what you're looking for with the four-part salivary cortisol, I would recommend that you go check out that video because that will be a great follow-up to this one. And the other thing I'd recommend is if you want to know where your health is along the spectrum of disease to health, I've created a simple at-home functional health assessment that I've linked in the description of this video. And what this is, is a simple at-home nine-question assessment, making measurements that you can make in the privacy of your own home to give you deeper insight into your overall state of health and wellness with a functional perspective. So be sure to check out that video that explains how a four-part salivary cortisol test really gives you the information that you need to understand your cortisol handling. Of course, like, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff, and I'll see you guys in another video. And take care.